It's really great to be walking along the beach with you here. Beautiful Rainbow Beach on what a glorious day here in Australia. And as we're walking along this beach, remembering the promise that comes with the word rainbow. God had said that and every time we come to Rainbow Beach, we just remember that awesome promise that he's given to us. And one of the special promises he's given to us is you. Uh, what a special part of my life you are and what a miracle God performed in our lives. Mm -hmm. It was a very beautiful day back in 1979 and Margie and I decided that we'd go swimming with our family. We were at Kings Beach in Caloundra and there was a really good surf running so we all went in for a swim. Margie stayed with the couple of older girls and she was about 20-30 metres out from the water's edge. Uh, Melinda was in making sandcastles uh, in with the crowd on the edge of the beach and I was catching some large waves further out. And I'd catch a wave and come into where the girls were and say good day and have a bit of a chat and go back out and, and do a little bit more surfing. On one occasion I caught a wave, came back in and our two daughters Kim and Janelle were there. Uh, where's mum? Oh she must have gone in. So there was a big crowd, it was a little bit hard to pick people out from anywhere. I looked up on the beach, couldn't see her there and I couldn't see, I could see Margie's mum and dad and Melinda were there but like I said there were so many people and so I decided that I'd go back out and catch another wave. Went out, caught another wave eventually, came back in and still no sign of Margie and we were discussing this with the girls, wonder where she went to and about 50 metres down the beach I suddenly noticed there was a little group of people obviously in a state of some sort of panic and they were running backwards and forwards and I saw a lifesaver come running down the beach and I realised that there was something, somebody rolling backwards and forwards in the waves right on the edge of the water realised it was Margie and by the time I got there they had dragged her out and started drastic CPR. They really didn't think that she was going to be uh, pulling through at all. At that stage she was stone cold dead. There was no heartbeat, no breathing, no nothing and to my estimation it had been the best part of 20 minutes since I'd first noticed that she'd gone missing. Well they called an ambulance they put her on oxygen, they continued CPR, still no sign of any sort of resuscitation. They took her to the Caloundra Hospital, into the emergency ward, still giving oxygen, still working CPR. They did it so enthusiastically, they broke ribs in her chest cage, just desperately trying to get something going. A little bit of background, uh, when I was 14 I began to take epileptic fits and um, it seems that um, as I was in the water I must have had a seizure and that was what caused me to drown in the water and to be in the predicament of uh, being washed up on the beach and uh, I had no knowledge or really of what because I just go out and I, I don't know anything in pretty much until I wake up and so that is um, that is a little bit of the background of what Jeff's talking about. Yeah. We got to the hospital, they took her into the emergency room, they immediately started work on her there, but eventually they said to me, look, are you sure about your daughters? Are they all okay? Is everything okay? Uh, we don't want somebody else drowning, we want to make sure that they're being looked after. And I was sure, that, well, I was nearly certain that they would be okay, but I didn't really know. And they suggested that there wasn't anything I could do there. As a matter of fact, they said no matter what happened, the prognosis is not going to be good at all. Uh, they weren't sure that they were going to be able to revive her, still weren't getting any positive signs. And even if they did, she had been dead for so long that she would be a permanent vegetable. There is no chance that she won't come out with massive, massive brain damage. I went home to her parents' place and stayed there with them for a few minutes and then really feeling bad, ended up going for a walk down to the beach by myself. 
I was going to be left alone, possibly with a totally incapacitated wife. Uh, we had three daughters I was going to have to be responsible for and feeling desperate, desperate pain. And so I was praying for her and asking God for help in this situation. Meantime, back at the house, uh, Margie's mum had gathered the three girls together and said, we've got to pray for this, we've got to pray for this. Well, eventually, I decided that, hey, what am I doing here? I need to go back to the hospital. I expected, when I get to the hospital, that they would be sending me either to the morgue, worst possible scenario, or to intensive care. But they suggested that I go up to one of the wards. And I went up there, still feeling the worst, uh, still feeling pretty sorry for myself. I was 35 at the time, Margie was 34. We had daughters 13, 12 and 7 years old, if I remember correctly. But it, it really wasn't a good situation. So I'm going up to visit with my unconscious wife, probably brain dead wife, up in the ward. Maybe I should get you to tell you what happened in the ward. This is rather interesting. As, as, I'm, as I'm accustomed to um, waking up after having a turn, I'm usually fairly sick and just uh, recovery takes some time. So um, I did that. I woke up and found myself in a hospital ward and wondered, how did I get here? Oh, I must have had a turn. And um, so, But I wanted to be sick because I had salt water and oh, I felt like everything <laughs> inside. And so I thought, OK, I need to um, press the button and, and get some help. So I pressed the button and the nurse came flying into my room and she stood like she was mesmerised and I thought to myself, what's wrong with that woman? And I said, I need a bowl. And she couldn't move, she was fixed. And I didn't understand what was going on, of course, because I was unaware of what had happened to me. I just thought I'd had a turn in, in the water or, and I was just recovering. And uh, she couldn't move and didn't move. And I said to her in desperation, I'm going to be sick, I need a bowl, quickly. So she finally um, took off and came back with all the staff and the doctors and the nurses and a bowl, thankfully. <laughs> and they drew the curtains around my bed and all proceeded to watch me while I um, you know, was just sick and got rid of all that was inside of me. And I thought, this is the strangest hospital. Why are they doing this? And it wasn't until the doctor sat down and said to me, you were dead. And I said, excuse me? I was dead? What do you mean I was dead? Well, you were, and you're here, and we don't know why. And we can only put this down to a miracle. And I agreed with him. I didn't know at the time that my husband was on the beach crying out to God from his heart for a miracle. My mother was at home. This is the power of prayer, people. My mother was at home and she said to my little girls, sit down girls, we're gonna hold hand and we're gonna ask God for a miracle today. We're gonna ask him for a miracle because we've got to have one. There's no other way out. And so they did simply just prayed the prayer of faith and God performed a miracle. Precisely at that time, I sat up in bed in the hospital. See how good God is? Never lose your faith, people. Hang on to God because your time is in God's hands. My time was in God's hands. On that day, it wasn't my appointed time to go. God said, not yet, not yet. I want you, you know, sometimes we've got to learn a few more things in life. I don't know what that was, but I know God's good. And I know that my faith is stronger because of it. So hold on, hang on, never let go. And you can't imagine my surprise when I went into the ward expecting to find Margie unconscious on the pillow and she's sitting up. Admittedly, she was spitting salt and she was spitting sand. She had sand in her ears, she had sand in her nose, she had sand all through her because of the time that she'd been rolling backwards and forwards. But I was so glad to have my wife back and she was not a vegetable. She's as bright 
And God did a perfect miracle when he did that miracle. I'm so grateful. I'm so glad. And on top of all of, of that, when I left the hospital, finally, we were still all stunned, you know, at what God had done because it was such a, an incredible miracle. And as I left the hospital, the doctor said, well, you will be back here again because you are so full of water and sand that you will probably get pneumonia. Well, I went home thinking, um, well, God did something here. So we'll leave that to God, won't we? I didn't even get a common cold out of that. God, when he does a work, he does it good.